Wow, Joanne! Can you see that snake? Who? It looks so scary. What's written there? K I N G C O B R A. King Cobra? King Cobra? That's the most venomous snake. Oh, I'm really scared at the sight of these snakes. I'm also scared of snakes, Joanne. C come, let's go. That one was so scary. What I have heard is that snakes do not harm you unless you go and harm them. Yeah, but is there any place where there are no snakes? Hmm, I have heard that there are no snakes in Ireland. Who? No snakes in Ireland? But how? What I have read is that the patron saint of Ireland banished all the snakes from the country. Joanne, who is the patron saint of Ireland? I think it is Saint Patrick. Saint Patrick? Come, let us get back home quick. Uncle Francis should be reaching home at any time now. Maybe we can ask him to narrate the story of Saint Patrick today. Yes, Joanne, that is a good idea. Wow, that must be Uncle Francis. Good morning, children. Good morning, Uncle. So, how was your visit to the zoo? Did you find anything interesting? I was really scared when I saw the snakes there, Uncle. <laughs> Don't worry, Jim. Most people are scared of snakes. Uncle Francis, I told Jim that there are no snakes in Ireland. That is quite right, Joan. Many believe that it was St. Patrick who banished all the snakes from Ireland. Uncle, can you please narrate the story of St. Patrick today? Sure. I shall tell you the story of St. Patrick, the patron saint of Ireland today. Are you ready? Yes. St. Patrick was born in Great Britain in A.D. 387. When he was 16, he was captured by pirates and taken to Ireland. He was then sold to a tribal chieftain called Milchu. Chief, please let me go back to my parents. The pirates took me away from my home. What? How dare you? I just bought you, slave, and now you want to go home? <laughs> go there and look after those sheep, you idiot! Master, please be kind. But he didn't listen, and Patrick had to work really hard for six years as a slave to his master. And then, one night, when he was sleeping... Patrick, get up. You need to leave your master and go back to your home. Huh? What am I hearing? Is it... is it a dream? Get up and flee from your master. A ship is waiting for you to go back to Britain. The... the boat? Yes, my lord. I'll do as you say. The port was about 200 miles away, but Patrick didn't think twice. He got up and started running at once, and he finally reached there in a few days' time. Captain, I need to travel to the Great Britain. Can you please let me board the ship? Hello, young man. Why do you look so worried? Are you running away from someone? No, no, Captain. In fact, I want to get back to my family. Huh? But then how come you are here in Ireland? I have been working as a slave for the past six years. I need to return home now. It's very urgent, Captain. Please help me. Hmm. Patrick was able to convince the captain after a lot of persuasion, and he finally started his journey back home. After many days of travel, Patrick reached home and lived happily for a long time. But one day, he received another vision from God. It is the voice of the Irish. We appeal to you, holy servant boy. Come back to Erin and walk among us. Meanwhile, Patrick was learning to become a cleric under St. Germain. Bishop Palladium was entrusted with the task of evangelizing the pagan community of Ireland by Bishop Celestine. However, because of the stiff opposition of the tribal chieftains, Palladium had to discontinue the mission. Hmm. So, Bishop Palladium has discontinued the mission? Your Holiness, he was really threatened by the tribal chieftain. Judaism is deep-rooted in Ireland, 
and we need to send someone familiar with the Celtic language. I think only then will they welcome our person. Uncle Francis, what is Druidism and Celtic language? Druidism is the belief of the ancient people in which forces of nature are worshipped as God. Celtic language is the language spoken by Celts, the Anglo-Saxon community that lived in Ireland. Your Holiness, I have a cleric under me named Patrick, who has spent about six years in Ireland. He is well versed with the Celtic language. Patrick, is it? All right, then let us send him to Ireland for the mission. Based on the recommendation of Bishop Germain, Patrick was sent to Ireland for the missionary service. In the year 433, Bishop Patrick and his companions landed in Ireland. While Patrick was on his way to town, he was stopped by a tribal chieftain called Dichu. Dichu and his followers had blocked the road. Hey, where do you think you are going? This is my territory. I'm the servant of God. I have come to this country to speak about Jesus. <laughs> Jesus? We don't want any new gods. He is not a new god, but he's the only god. Huh? How dare you speak against our god? I am going to teach you a lesson. When Dichu tried to swing his sword at Bishop Patrick, his arm suddenly became so rigid he couldn't even move it. It was then that Dichu realized that he was fighting with a holy man. Oh, pardon me, saint, for my ignorance. I will never stop you ever again. Please accept that barn as my gift to you. Thanks, Chieftain Dichu. This barn was later converted to a monastery, church, and retreat center by St. Patrick. See, Chieftain Dichu, I would like to meet the chieftains of other tribes as well. Can you help me? Well, hmm, I have an idea. Lewer. The Supreme Monarch of Ireland has called all the country chieftains for a feast next Sunday. You can meet all of them there. Great! That will be an excellent opportunity. Thank you, chieftain. Bishop Patrick then met another chieftain named Sexnan. He stayed at his house for a few days, and the chieftain got so impressed that he got baptized by Patrick. He even allowed his son, Benin, to join Patrick in his mission. It was the day of the feast. All the chieftains had gathered for celebrating. There was a tradition on the feast day where the fire is first lit up at the royal mansion. This was supposed to mark the beginning of the celebrations. Until the fire is lit, the whole town had to remain in darkness. Everyone in the village was given instructions to not light the fire. It was also the eve of Easter Sunday. Bishop Patrick and his followers were praying at the Hill of Slain. As usual, Bishop Patrick lit the Pascal lights, and this was seen by the chieftains. What am I seeing on the hill? Who lit that fire before our monarch did? Oh, King, look over there. Huh? Who could that be? Oh, King. We need to put out that fire immediately. If we don't, then that fire will keep burning in our kingdom forever. Okay, I command you to put out that fire immediately. Lord Niet, our god of war, surround the hill slain with clouds and doze the fire. As they started praying, dark clouds gathered above the hill. Bishop, the druids are getting the help of their demonish gods. They are going to extinguish the fire. Benin, do not be afraid. Remain calm. Master, 
The druids are blowing the wind to extinguish the Paschal fire. You must do something. The Lord our God will protect the fire. This flame of belief lit on the soil of Ireland cannot be extinguished by the forces of demon. And as Bishop Patrick prayed, the clouds began to disappear and the wind subsided. They then marched toward the monarch's mansion. When they arrived, they saw that the minister Irk was also standing by his side. Bishop Patrick tried to convince Irk about his mission. Bishop, we have seen what has happened at Tara, and His Highness is convinced about your mission. Thank you, Minister. But, Bishop, you speak about one God, then you speak about the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. How one can there be three? Minister, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit together forms the Holy Trinity. They are one, like this shamrock leaf. Bishop Patrick, you seem to be a saintly man. You are given the freedom to go around the country and preach your belief to the people. Thank you, King. This was the greatest day in the missionary work of Bishop Patrick. He was victorious over the paganism in Ireland. Have you heard the famous St. Patrick's Breastplate? The hymn composed by Bishop Patrick? No, Uncle. Can you recite them for us? Sure. It goes like this. I bind myself today, the strong virtue of an invocation of Trinity. I believe the Trinity in the unity, the creator of the universe. Uncle Francis, can you tell us why there are no snakes in Ireland? Hmm, yes. Bishop Patrick converted many pagan counties to Christianity. Once, Bishop Patrick was fasting and praying on top of the pagan Eagle Mountain. Bishop Patrick continued the prayers for 40 days. Demons gathered together to distract the saint from the fast and prayers. But... Go away, you demons! You cannot distract me from my prayers! The demons did not go away. Huh? I'll show you. When the saint shook the bell, all the demons got scared and flew away. Then the vultures came to distract the saint. But once the saint shook the bell, the vultures too flew away. Next, it was the turn of the snakes to distract the saint. Huh? Snakes? I command in the name of the Lord to get out of the country of Ireland forever. And that was the end of snakes in Ireland. That Eagle Mountain is now called St. Patrick's Mountain. How did Bishop Patrick die, Uncle Francis? He died of old age on 17th March 461 and was buried in Chieftain's Fort near Saul. The Cathedral of Dawn is constructed at that place. Uncle, that was really an exciting story. Thank you, Uncle. Children, that is all for today. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Uncle.
What are you doing, Joanne? Can't you see? I'm reading a book. I know that. What are you reading about? It's about Saint Philomena. Saint Philomena? Who was she? I don't know yet, Jim. I have just started reading this book. Don't be like that. Tell me something about this saint, please. I'm telling you the truth. Look at this book. The language they have used in this book is so tough. I'm not able to understand it at all. I have an idea. Ha ha ha. I know what you're thinking. Let's ask Uncle Francis. And Uncle Francis is here. <laughs> Good morning, Uncle. Good morning, children. I know that look on your faces. You want a story, right? Haha, <laughs> that's right, Uncle. Can you tell us the story of Saint Philomena today? Yes, Uncle. I brought this book about the saint from the library. But the language is so tough, and I don't understand it at all. Saint Philomena, right? All right. Now why don't we go for a walk, and I'll tell you her story. That's a great idea. Let me put on my shoes. Come on, let's go. Yes, Uncle. Little is known about the life of Saint Philomena. In 1802, the remains of a young woman were found in a catacomb of Saint Priscilla on the Via Solaria. It was covered with stones, the symbols on which indicated that the body was a martyr named Saint Philomena. She is the only saint to have revealed her story in what you can call private revelation. Huh? What does that mean? Saint Philomena revealed her story to three different people in different parts of the world. These three people didn't know each other as well. Was all their three stories the same, uncle? Yes, it was. Now what I'm going to tell you is what was revealed to Mother Maria Luisa de Jesu. Philomena is believed to have been born in Corfu, a small island in ancient Greece, towards the end of the 3rd century. Her father was a king who controlled a small state in Greece, and her mother was also from royal blood. In those times, idol worship was a common practice, and the king and queen were no different as well. They had been without children for a long, long time. They offered sacrifices and prayers to their false gods so that they could have a child. God, please help us with a child. Please, God, we have been offering you sacrifices for many years now. Please. Please let us have a child. But all their sacrifices were in vain, and they didn't have a child for a long, long time. There lived a doctor named Publius, who lived in the palace servicing the king. The doctor was a preacher of Christianity as well. He understood the pain of the king, so one day he came to them and talked to them about Jesus. He promised to pray for them if they agreed to receive baptism. What do you think, dear? His word sounds true. I think we had been praying to false gods all this time. Otherwise, why wouldn't they bless us with a child? Hmm, that's true, my queen. We made so many sacrifices, and yet we don't have a child. The words of the doctor had enlightened their spirits. They got baptized and got converted into Christianity. And in a few months, they were blessed with a beautiful daughter. We are going to call you Philomena, which means the daughter of light. <laughs> That's such a lovely name. We love you, Philomena. The king and queen were finally rewarded with what they longed for. They were very happy now. 
Philomena grew up to be a beautiful child. She was very well behaved and she was a faithful follower of Lord Jesus Christ. When she was a child, she had offered herself to Jesus and she took a vow to offer her virginity to Jesus Christ alone. Their happiness didn't last for long. After a few years, by the time Philomena had turned 13, the Roman Emperor Diocletian threatened to attack the island. The king and his family were called to Rome to discuss peace between the states. That emperor is an evil man. Do you think he will agree for peace? I don't know, dear, but we have to give it a try. Don't worry, father. God is with us. Hmm. Yes, dear. God will help us. When they arrived at the capital, they proceeded to the palace to meet the king. As soon as the emperor saw Philomena, his eyes were fixed on her. He was possessed by her beauty and grace. The king pleaded his defense sincerely and he begged for peace. He didn't want his people to bear the suffering of war, so he earnestly pleaded with the emperor. But all this time, the emperor did not take his eyes off Philomena. As soon as the king stopped, the emperor spoke to him. Thank you for coming to Rome. Don't worry about the war. There will be no war if you give me what I ask for. What do you ask for, emperor? You shall have all the force of my empire, and think of living happily for the rest of your lives. I ask only one thing, and that is the hand of your daughter. Huh? The king was surprised to hear the offer, which was far from what he was expecting. He didn't think twice and agreed to the offer. What? That is such a wonderful offer, Emperor. Of course. Of course you can marry my daughter. But... But father... Shh, be silent. We will talk about this once we reach back home. Now, you may go back to your island and make preparations for the wedding. Thank you, my lord. Once they reached back home, the king and the queen did everything they could to convince Philomena. you I have offered myself to Jesus please don't make me do this but that was a long time ago and you were just a child then you were of no such age to make that engagement they fought about this for days and nights the king and the queen caressed her threatened her and did everything they could to convince their daughter but Philomena stood strong at last they fell on their knees and started begging her. My child, have pity on us, our country, our subjects, please. No, nothing comes before to me than Lord Jesus. Not you, not my country, not even my subjects. The king was in a state of despair now. He finally decided to take her to the emperor without seeking her permission. I hope she'll be all right. My lovely lady, why are you denying this marriage? I can give anything you ask for. Gold, servants, palaces, whatever you ask for. I am the Emperor, and I can grant you anything. Nothing that you give will satisfy me. 
I have pledged myself to Lord Jesus and I will never marry anyone else. <laughs> you are so naive. Don't you realize that you are talking to the most powerful man on earth? Not even your Jesus can save you if I decide so. You are mistaken, my lord. You are nothing before Lord Jesus. How dare you? Soldiers, arrest her and put her in prison. The emperor was very angry with Philomena and he ordered her to be chained and put in prison. He thought that the pain and shame would weaken the courage of Philomena. After a few days, the emperor came to visit her and see if she was willing to marry him. What do you say now? Are you going to marry me? I cannot marry you, for I have promised myself for the Lord. You are going to rot in this cell. The emperor put her in captivity and tortured her for 37 days. And on the night of the 37th day of her captivity, Mother Mary appeared before her. Huh? Oh, blessed mother! My daughter, three more days of prison. And after 40 days, you will receive heavenly glory. Thank you. Thank you, mother. Have courage, my child. You will have to face severe hardship in the coming days. But fear not, for your angel Gabriel will come to your aid. And then the vision disappeared. These words of Mother Mary gave her strength again, and the cell was filled with celestial aroma. What's that lovely perfume? <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It's coming from the inside. Look, it, it feels so divine. That's true. When the emperor learned that she wasn't giving up, he got really angry. Strip her! Strip her and lash her in full view of the men here! The soldiers who were guarding her cell brought her and tied her to a pole. They hesitated to unclothe her completely as they felt some sort of divinity in her. But they were forced to obey the emperor, so they started lashing her. The soldiers kept lashing Philomena until she was covered in blood. That's enough! She's going to die any moment now. Take her back to the dungeon and let her die in there. The soldiers dragged her body back into the cell, expecting her to die soon. That's when two angels descended from heaven, appearing to her in the darkness. They poured soothing balm into her wounds, and Philomena was even better than before. Hey, look! What happened? Is she dead? Take a look and see for yourself. God, that's a miracle. Thank God who saved her. What she is saying must be the truth. Jesus must be the real God. Hmm, but we must inform this to the king. <laughs> he is going to be really angry when he sees her. When the emperor heard what had happened, he was furious. Huh? How could that happen? I saw blood with my own eyes. She must have died now. Tie an anchor around her neck and throw her in the river. Let her die in full view of the public. The next day, a heavy anchor was tied around Philomena's neck. And she was about to be thrown into the river. Many people had gathered there to witness the punishment. 
through all the anger. I... I am sorry for doing this. Don't worry. The angels will guard me. The soldiers threw the heavy anchor into the river. And it dragged Philomena into the river as well. As soon as she hit the riverbed, the angels appeared and loosened the chains around Philomena's neck. She was then raised from underwater in full view of the public to the riverbank. She was unharmed and she was not even wet. <laughs> The crowds cheered for her, and some of them embraced Lord Jesus when they watched this miracle. I can't believe my eyes. Her God must be the true God. I am going to be a Christian from today. What sort of sorcery is this? I shouldn't let her live any longer. Then, the Emperor ordered her to be dragged along the streets. Then he commanded the archers to shoot her with arrows. Fire! all over her body. She was covered in blood. The soldiers dragged her body back into the dungeon and locked her in. Do you think she will die this time? I... I hope not. I hope her God saves her this time too. And yes, they did. The angels appeared again and healed her in no time. That night, Philomena went into a sweet, deep sleep. When the emperor heard what happened, he ordered the soldiers to fire arrows at her again. And this time, he wanted her to die in full view of the public. Philomena was made to stand on the street and the archers got ready to shoot arrows at her. But this time, none of the arrows hit her. The emperor tried again and again, but the arrows simply refused to hit her. You are a magician? Now watch what's going to happen to you! The Emperor thought he could defeat magic by using burning arrows. Fire! But this time, before the burning arrows could hit her, they took a U-turn and hit the archers instead! <laughs> ah! Ah! Now all the archers were dead. The people among the crowd realized the divinity of Philomena and bowed down before her. I bow down to your gods. They are truly powerful. We are convinced of your faith. These murmurs and acclamations infuriated the emperor. That's enough. Let's not play with her anymore. Chop our head off now. Philomena was truly relieved when she heard this. She knew that today she was going to die and enter heaven. She had longed for so long for this day. Philomena died on a Friday, the third hour after midday, the same hour and day as Jesus had died. And that's the story of Saint Philomena. Wow, that was such a great story, Uncle. I'm glad you liked it, dear. She died at the young age of 13. So she is considered a patron saint for babies, infants, and youth. After hundreds of miraculous cures through her intercession, 
She was beatified in 1837. Come on, kids, it's getting very late. We must head back now. Yes, Uncle.